Articular cartilage is a highly specialised connective tissue of diarthrodial uh, joints. Um, it's, you can think about its composition uh, in terms of its cells, water content and the extracellular matrix. So the cells are mainly that of chondrocytes. Um, the water content is, is quite uh, quite large, it's approximately 80%. Whereas the extracellular matrix is largely composed of um, uh, collagen, which is mainly type 2 in highline cartilage, and uh, also proteoglycans. So you may be asked to draw the uh, cross-section of articular cartilage and uh, it has various layers. Um, it has a very thin surface layer, a superficial layer, a middle layer, deep layer, a uh, calcified layer with subchondral bone and then the cancellous bone. So the very, very superficial layer is called the lamina splendens. And this is a, uh, an acellular layer and is really uh, composed of a clear film of small uh, collagen uh, fibrils that does not contain any cells and it's the very very surface layer of the articular cartilage. In the superficial layer the uh, the chondrocytes you have to think about how the chondrocytes are arranged and how the collagen is arranged so in this very superficial layer the chondrocytes are very flat and uh, this is to resist shear forces at the surface of the articular cartilage. In the middle layer, or the tangential layer, the chondrocytes are, are more rounded. And then as you get deeper into the deep layer, the chondrocytes are more columnar in shape. And the reason for this is that as you get deeper, the the, the forces that the chondrocytes have to resist become more that of sh resisting shear at the surface, but as you become deeper, it tries to resist um, compressive loads. Here you have the calcified cartilage layer, and here you have the subchondral bone, and then underneath the subchondral bone you have the cancellous bone. And the reason you have this transition is so that you uh, do not have um, a, uh, an, an area of, um, of, of, of stress or weakness. So there's a gradual transition of the tissue between cartilage down into bone. So the calcified cartilage layer really just anchors the, the cartilage onto the bone. And between the deep and calcified layer is your tide mark. And the importance of this tide mark is, um, is that the, the blood supply actually comes from the, uh, the, 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 the cancellous bone. Uh, we know that the articular cartilage itself is completely void of uh, lymphatics, blood vessels, um, and, and nerve fibers. So the, the clinical importance of this tide mark is that if you do have an injury to the articular cartilage, um, anything superficial to the tide mark is unlikely to heal. In fact, it won't heal. However, uh, if there is a, a deeper laceration to the cartilage which breaks through the tide mark and into the calcified cartilage and the subchondral bone, um, you will get a kind of infiltration of the blood vessels and therefore you will get development of a fibrocartilage cartilaginous scar or fibrocartilaginous plug um, and therefore the deeper lesions uh, do tend to heal and this is the principles um, behind microfracture because in microfracture you break through the tide mark to, to try to get uh, the cartilage to heal. Now we think about the alignment of the collagen 2 fibers and similar to the cells in the superficial layer the, uh, the collagen fibers are arranged much more transverse. In the middle layer, they're much more at 45 degrees. And in the deeper layer, they're more vertical. 
Uh, and this is exactly the same reason uh, for resisting the shear forces at the top and compressive forces at the bottom. And you can imagine uh, if you draw the, 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 the collagen fibers uh, in these uh, kind of, they, they make these arcades and, and these are known as the arcades of, of Benninghof, uh, which describes the alignment of the collagen two type, uh, type two collagen fibers. The other thing of note is that um, the more superficial layer has a higher concentration of water, and as you get deeper, the concentration of water becomes uh, lower. Uh, but conversely, uh, at, the, uh, at, at the bottom, you have a higher concentration of uh, proteoglycans, whereas at the surface, you have a relatively lower concentration of uh, proteoglycans. So, so then the examiner might ask, well, what's, what's proteoglycan and, and why, is, why is that important? And you may have to end up drawing one as well. So um, the, way, uh, the, the way I draw proteoglycans is that you, you have a, or, or, or you're known to have a hyaluronic acid backbone. So this is high hyaluronic acid. Uh, and this is uh, your backbone of your proteoglycan. And uh, off this backbone, you have these link proteins. So these are your link proteins. And this uh, connects onto a protein core on, on either side. And um, the, on the protein core, you, you have uh, se separate other uh, protein um, molecules which actually are unnumbered. Uh, they're, they're called the G1 protein, G2 and G3 proteins. And between the G2 and the G3 proteins you have um, your keratin sulfate which are smaller in shape and your chondroitin sulfate. And these are joined or linked onto the protein core by sugar bonds. So these are sugar bonds here Okay, and uh, so this is your keratin uh, sulfate, and above you have your chondroitin sulfate. So, so, so here you you have this uh, along the, the the whole course of of the proteoglycan molecule. So you have your G one, G two, and G three, and similarly you have your chondroitin here keratin there, and the same here as well. And, um, and, and this whole kind of part here is called an agrican. And this whole proteoglycan molecule um, provides cartilage its um, compressive strength, and um, it tries to do this by trapping, trapping water. Uh, the ag agrican molecules try to trap water to, to increase its compressive strength.